have you ever seen a dragon? Well, I certainly haven't, but maybe you guys have. And the reason I'm asking this question is because today we are talking about a brand new manga series dropped on viz.com this Sunday called The Hunter's Guild Red Hood. And let me tell you one thing, this has got me more excited than when Black Clover started, than when My Hero Academia started. The only thing that I can compare to this that I got stoked for was probably Dr. Stone. As far as Shonen Viz current running mangas and such, this was the this has been the most exciting thing that's dropped for me in a, in years, in literal years. It truly is because Hunter's Guild Red Hood does chapter one, 57 pages of nothing but straight fire, nothing but greatness are in these pages. Not just the art style, not just the pacing, not just the premise, but the dialogue. The dialogue sold me completely. The dialogue is the star of this entire first chapter. And I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I've been reading a mon manga for a very long time, and nowadays it seems like every, for the last like decade or so, it seems like every manga gets like this 70, 60 page chapter start, right? To, to really sell out their premise. Back in the day, that shit didn't happen. The most uh, a manga could got from, a, from 19 pages chapter to chapter was like, 28 or 30 pages. Wow, chapter one, 30 pages of a story. Wow, nowadays it's double that. And I understand why, because you really want to be able to catch a reader's attention. You need a few more pages to establish, et cetera, et cetera. So I understand the reason as to why they do it. But this one, 57 pages, honestly, in today's world, still isn't that, that much. A lot of them start off with odd, an odd 70 or more. But this one gives us 57 pages of nothing. There is not a single useless page in this entire manga. This, I'm gonna review the series, guys. I am going to review the shit out of this series. It is just that good. It's a combination of so many things that I love about fiction. It's got the combination of different things. The art style is not, one of the best things that I love about manga is there's so many unique mangas with so many unique art styles, right? But sometimes I feel like one of the biggest falters of a great story is a bad art style. And not necessarily that it's poorly drawn, it's either preference of the individual who doesn't just like the style in general, not that it's a bad story or it's not good artwork, just not really appealing to the, art, the, the style chosen. But the second thing is sometimes certain artists' style does not fit the theme of the story. So you might have a great premise and you might have a great mangaka, but if you crash them together, maybe it wouldn't be as good. Maybe you don't need uh, that mangaka's certain art style. Maybe you need Oda's art style, maybe you need Murata's art style, maybe you need Kubo's, Kichimoto's, maybe certain art styles fit different themes and story and plot line, right? And this one, perfect. Perfectly fitting. Not my favorite art style in the world, but a goddamn good one, and it fits the themes of this manga so, so clearly well. Now, I will do a quick overview here. This isn't so much a review, this is more of like a promotional, hey, Guys, read this damn chapter because this series is something that I think if it takes off, I'm gonna love it more than everything that's currently running in Shonen Jump. Maybe, maybe barring, well, barring One Piece and maybe Dr. Stone would be the only two. Because right now, this first chapter has me more hyped than Black Clover or My Hero Academia have had for their entire arcs currently running. So, like, this one chapter has me more excited than, like, the two top series right now on Shonen Jump barring One Piece. So, like, that, I mean, if that's not high praise, I don't know what to tell you. And I actually am enjoying my Hair Academia and Black Clover right now. But this thing is stealing the show this week for me. Like, first of all, it's got a very Castlevania sort of feel. It's got this, like, monstrous world, like, sort of, you know, werewolves and zombies and vampires. And they, they, they all exist. Dragons exist. It's got this, that premise, right? It's got me feeling a little bit of like the Castlevania Torico, um, you know, that, that sort of style, right? But with the, the reason I say Castlevania, it's got that more horror element. It's, it's very, because this feels a very uh, 15th, 16th century by the looks of everybody in, in the village and how everybody's dressed and how the village uh, looks and stuff like that. The mayor uh, has, has a farm and has sheep and stuff like that. So I'm feeling it's very, it's, it's very uh, like four or 500 years ago if it's on earth. 
if it's on Earth. Um, but the entire premise, the overview of this chapter, is simply a werewolf is attacking our main character's village. Our main character, I don't believe we're given an age for him, but his name's uh, V. Lu, who is probably between the ages of 12 and 15. Sort of hard to tell right now by the art style. I don't believe, as I said before, I don't believe we're given an age for this character. But either way, he has decided, like, the, the whole village is under attack and stuff, right? And the, the mayor and everyone is just trying to make the best of things right now. But the fact of the matter is a werewolf has been attacking this tiny little village and has been killing, uh, has already killed six people. So the mayor decides to sell his, um, his house and his sheep and everything in between just so they can hire someone from the Hunter's Guild. Now the Hunter's Guild is, of course, this place that... Um, you know that they're they're considered money grubbers, right? Like they're not heroes, they're not knights. They don't do it out of the goodness of their heart. No, they are simply they're a profession. You hire them, you get the job done, right? And here's where the dialogue all comes into mix. But I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but pretty much that's the premise of the story. There's a werewolf attacking the village, and this is a world where dragons and vampires and werewolves and everything is existing, right? So automatically, great premise. I always love that gothic. Um, Castlevania sort of feel to things when it's done properly. A lot of people go too like grotesque with it. They too a little too much Japanese horror, a little too much um, like creepiness rather than just straight up slasher horror, like monsters and ghouls and goblins. Oh my, sort of style. And I'm really appreciating that this one seems to be doing. It's it's walking the line perfectly for me between the two and. Vilu is basically like against this and a lot of the other villagers are against this because they're like, well, why can't I kill a werewolf? It's like, listen, you don't know the true terror of werewolves. You're young, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he looks up to the mayor because the mayor is the one who actually killed a werewolf after it ate Vilu's parents. Vilu's parents, we don't know what age he was necessarily, uh, I don't believe, because we still don't really know how old Vilu is. But he ended up being the one with his trusty axe who killed a werewolf years ago that killed Vilu's parents. And then he took, the village took him in, and et cetera, et cetera. And he looks up to the mayor very highly. Of course, why wouldn't you? Um, so the fact of the matter is, though, is that they decide, like, it's, it's very important. It's very, like, werewolves killed half a dozen people. This village is very small. We either have to move on and just abandon all this work and all this our houses, our homes, our fields, our everything. We have to abandon everything because of this werewolf. So uh, he decides to hire the Hunter's Guild to take care of the problem. Now they do all agree that even though they consider them money grubbers and like, like, like cheapskates and stuff like that, at the end of the day, they get the job done. So it's probably for the best. Now when the Hunter shows up, it's this little girl named Grimm. And uh, everyone's a little shocked by this, et cetera, et cetera. And Vilu, of course, is very, very upset by this. Going like, what, what can you do? What can you do? It's like, and he's, she's like, pay me up front. You know, sort of idea. I want half up front. I'll deal with the werewolf. And everyone's like, what, why would we do that? Like, why can't you? Like, people in this village are suffering. What are you doing? Like, how can you be? And so here's where what I'm talking about when I say dialogue. The dialogue steals the show of this entire series because... First off, she starts off with the, we hunters aren't trying to be heroes, right? And she goes on to say that, like, do you, do you insult or complain about a florist because they're selling flowers? Do you complain about a carpenter who sells you wood and builds your house? Do you complain about anything? Like, do you think that lawyers and doctors and everything else in this world, I'm just paraphrasing here, but do you think they all do these things out of the goodness of their heart? It depends. Like, like certain people die, but at the end of the day, we are not heroes. We are not a charity. We are a profession. You hired us to deal with a problem, regardless what the problem is. Yes, does it suck that a werewolf is attacking your village right now? Of course it does. But I'm not doing it without getting paid. I trained for this. This is my job. And I also need to pay bills and eat this month, right? So I understand. And, and it can be harsh. But I love that they're d diving full deep. And nowadays, mangas are trying to be deep. So many shonen mangas are trying to get into that realm of seinen without being too graphic. They're trying to grab, rather than these very cookie cutter, very simplistic, I'm going to fight you, power of friendship stuff. They're trying to, for the last decade and a half, they've been trying to sort of push out and push deeper into these very 
harsher, more realistic themes, these more frightening things that people don't want to confront and stuff, and these logic and these these uh, philosophies that people might not necessarily want to talk about at parties sort of idea, right? But And so this is no different initially. I would argue, okay, it's the first chapter, they're trying to scare us, they're trying to give us the harsh reality sort of idea. Most mangas of today are doing that. But it's not just this first time. That's why I'm saying the dialogue steals everything because the dialogue up and to and from everything is paced very naturally, but it's the second time. It's the second time because uh, 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 Vilao is meant to go take uh, Grimm, the little girl hunter, uh, to this hunting cabin and blah, 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 because they say that the werewolf is coming down from the mountains. And she's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. Trust me. But then we end up getting into this whole thing where she talks about... Uh, whether a werewolf is evil or not. So this is what I'm talking about. In the span of 57 chapters, we don't just get one side of philosophy. We get a second one where technically they said, well, the werewolf must be evil, blah, blah, blah. How could they eat their fellow? If, if the werewolf is one of the villagers, because that's what we find out, of course, we, we know that werewolves are transforming sort of ideas. And that's what Grimm has to explain to our main character here. And he's like, but, but all the villagers are good people. How could they do this? And he goes... She's like, well, no, it's not about an act of evil here. Do you consider the cow or the pig when they're on your plate and you eat supper? No, you're hungry, so you eat. Werewolves eat people. It's what they do. It's what appeals to them. You don't consider the cow or the pig. Are humans evil for eating cows and pigs? Well, if they're not, then the werewolf is no more evil than a human being. You still killed something. You still killed a living animal which humans, once again, we are still mammals, guys. You killed one to eat it, not out of maliciousness. It's not murder. It was survival. And that's what Grimm is trying to explain. It's like the human is neither good nor evil and neither is the werewolf. They are doing this for pure survival. You don't kill the cow because you want to kill a cow. You kill the cow because you need to eat, because you want to live. It's survival. That's all it is, base Base, base, base. So I was like, twice in one chapter, we're already getting to two different ideologies of human philosophy and really tough to talk about issues in the first damn chapter. And it's only halfway through the chapter we get both of them. So as I said before, the dialogue completely steals this entire chapter. It ends up being, we knew it was going to be one of the characters we met, of course. It ends up being the granny, uh, not the mayor. And unfortunately, the mayor, who I really, really enjoyed. I loved the mayor. I was very, I was very sad to see that he, he was either going to be the werewolf or he was going to die. And in the end, he ended up dying. He was not the werewolf in the end because I sort of thought like, okay, how did he kill the werewolf before? Why can't he try to kill this one, etc., etc.? Uh, that, that sort of ideology and apparently his axe is special that's another thing we learned that at the end of the chapter but his axe is special so um, they find out that the granny is this werewolf and the, the art style the way they're depicting a werewolf very different from like the classic lichen werewolf thing that we've seen in uh, multiple horror uh, movies and fiction and stuff like that so definitely very different it's got like this triple mouth sort of idea it's got multiple limbs it's this hairy grotesque monster and uh, honestly I did find uh, this 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 fight scene and everything uh, about it very interesting. And then of course, uh, then of course, Grimm ends up doing something. Grimm ends up doing something that I'm just completely I'm completely ecstatic at because she turns from a little girl into a babe. And I'm just like I haven't seen that in a long ass time. I haven't seen the whole classic since like Tenjo Tenge. I haven't seen the whole chibi little girl who's in high school who ends up being a total bombshell like you know like pulls a sexy no jutsu when when required and apparently is an adult is a badass etc etc and i was like all right all right all right this manga is getting just better and better and better let's freaking go um she pulls a men she pu pulls a men in black a tommy lee jones sort of thing at the end of men in black uh though i do question how the hell was she supposed to get away from the bomb because she told uh, uh, Vilo to run away after she gets swallowed. Then she puts the basket with the bomb in it. Like, put the apple in the basket. P puts the bomb in this, like, wicker basket. Like, this whole, like, hi, here you go, Hansel and Gretel style. Now die. Um, and they do do the classic thing. So this is very fairy tale. This is very German fairy tales based. Because, ha, uh, 
how did I smell you, my dears? How did I do this, my dear? So it's very much the, the little red riding hood thing, hence the red hood, the werewolf sort of idea. It, it's very, we're seeing a combination of not just classic horror, but we're seeing a lot of uh, German fairy tale aesthetics here as well. It's just a, such a beautiful combination. And she basically says, like, you need to run away, sort of, etc. So I'm very curious on how she expected to get out because he after saying, no, I'm not going to run away, and he was apparently at the beginning of the chapter, we heard he was pretty good with a musket, but he's still just a kid. How would he, how would he kill a werewolf? Ends up doing a very uh, Rancor Luke Skywalker thing, jams it between the teeth before he gets swallowed, and pulls the trigger and blows a bullet right through the, 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 you know, the mouth, the hood of the mouth of the werewolf, and just what the hell, takes the axe, which, as we find out, might be something important from the mayor, the mayor's axe that was left behind, and completely cuts down the werewolf slicing the stomach and everything grabs Grimm out of there and then as as they start to get away boom explosion time so absolutely incredible first chapter enjoyed it all to bits it was just it was such a fun ride like I haven't enjoyed a chapter of a new series so heavily for such a long time I haven't sat down probably since I'd probably say the last time was probably Dr. Stone, where I sat down in chapter one and I went, oh yeah, this is going to be good. I didn't do it for Black Clover. I didn't do it for My Hero Academia. Sorry to disappoint some of you guys. I didn't do it for a lot of popular series. I, I just didn't. I was sort of like, most were like, okay, like I can see myself continuing to read this. We'll see where this goes. This one, no. I I wanted, the, the moment I read this chapter, I said, I have a new series on YouTube. I've got something new to talk about because this series is, I hope, I hope it's fire because this first chapter is nothing but a 10 out of 10 chapter. It's absolutely fantastic. Zero faults with it. And then we learn, of course, at the beginning of the chapter, we got the color spread of um, Grimm explaining, like, have you ever seen a dragon before? And it's like, well, no, of course I haven't. And it's like, no. And it's like, they don't exist. It's like, no, they did exist. Here's the difference. They did exist. We exterminate. We made them extinct. We killed the last one like 500 years ago. He said and said, but here's the deal: werewolves, witches, vampires, ghouls, goblins, zombies, everything in between is still around. And until the day comes when they too have become nothing but myth, you thought a dragon was myth because we killed the last one so long ago. Nobody even believes they existed anymore. And I want every hunter's jobs is to make all these monsters, all these monstrosities become nothing but myths. And that's when the hunters will eventually fade away into myths themselves. Hunters are only necessary because these things still exist. So, of course, the end page is, you want to become a hunter boy. And that's the end of the chapter. It's an absolutely banger of a chapter. I just, I, I couldn't get over it. Like, I, I just couldn't. Like, I thought that everything was perfectly done. The art style suited it. The pacing was fine. 57 pages was not, there was no fluff in between. It did everything it had to do to explain the story, get us involved, make us understand. Like the lore was, was not, like there wasn't like this huge dialogue heavy section and then a bunch of action or anything like that. It was perfectly spaced. Everything, I, I haven't found a single fault yet with this chapter. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. This chapter was just fire. It was so good and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to review this series from now on because, and I, I, please tell me this wasn't just a one shot and it's officially picked up. Like, I don't know how people find out that information. I'm not big on like social media and stuff, but I'm assuming that this means, cause it doesn't say one shot. I'm assuming this means that this is serialized and this means we're going to get a goddamn greatness. We are going to finally get something that I can sink my teeth into and just say fucking A, you know, like. It's been so long since I've been so hyped about a brand new series, guys. Truly, truly, it has been. It's been way too long for me. And, I mean, I've been around manga for, God, such a long time. So, for me, this is really exciting. Like, as you guys can tell, I'm just I'm, I'm just so pumped. I'm so excited. I hope you guys check this series out uh, this Sunday. And if you uh, already knew about it, 
fantastic. What did you guys think? And if you don't like it, or if I happen to uh, lead you to it and you don't like it, or you do like it, let me know all these things down in the comment section down below. Like, comment, and subscribe as always. And we will see you guys back here again. Don't forget to drink responsibly as always. But now, guys, we officially have a brand new series for me to review, and I am goddamn going to review it because. I haven't been this excited in so many years for a new manga series. It's It's been a long ass time and uh, yeah, I'm just pumped. Hope you guys are too. Drink responsibly. This has been Griever signing out. Later everybody.